introduced something it is the, the Kesha for those that were there and I left it hanging somewhere and I said for you to do so there is a language there is a language and that is what we will be looking at in a little while. but let's go to the key uh, the key verse in the book of Isaiah chapter number 41 uh, verse number 14 uh, and 15 and 16 we can read all of them fear not you warm Jacob you men of Israel I will help you remember the song that we have just finished singing your help has come says the Lord and your Redeemer the Holy One of Israel behold I'll make you into a new threshing sledge with the sharp teeth you shall thresh the mountains and break them small and make the hills like chaff. We can just leave it at that point. In the book of Zechariah, chapter number 4, verse 5 and 6, this is the place that I, uh, when speaking, I said there is a question there. There is a statement that we might develop uh, today. So he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord. Then, okay. Four, five, uh, four, five, and six. Let's do it again. Five. Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, "Do are we Zachariah four five? And I said, "No, my lord." Verse number six. So he answered and said to me, "This is the word of the Lord, Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit," says the Lord. I think we go back to verse number four of the same. Let's start very, uh, a little further there. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me saying, what are this, my Lord? This is Zechariah. He's having a conversation with God. And why he's having conversation with, with God is because there is a mountain. And we said mountains are obstacles, are huge things or challenges that want to block you to get into your destiny. They want to resist you to get into your destiny. But there is a language. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Even when I know that help is coming and God has promised that he will help me, I must turn my language into speaking the language that releases and gives me that uh, uh, teeth that can thrash the mountain. I must be tuned in a way. I might be aligned myself. It is not every talk that chases the devil. You know, when I was preparing, I thought uh, of this story of these uh, uh, sons of the prophets that were praying for a demon-possessed person. And the, the, the demon is asking them one simple question, who are you? They are not asking what village you come from. They are not asking what is your name and the middle name and your achievement. They are asking who you are in terms of the demonstration and the power of God. Who are you in terms of relating with the Savior? Who are you in terms of knowing the grace that God gives us? Who are you? And because they did not know who they were, the demon chased the seven of them, beat them really hard. And my prayer is that when I go to chase the demons, first of all, I will not only know, I will not only know who I am, but I need to have a language, a language that I can use. The Bible tells me in the book of Mark, chapter number 11, Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verse 13 and 14. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verse 13 and 14 says, And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples had it. Yani wanafunzi wakasikia. Haku wakisema kimoyo moyo. No, he verbalized it. He, he verbalized. He spoke to that uh, fig tree. The same chapter, verse 20 to 25 the same chapter, verse 20 to 25, says, Now in the morning, which meant after they passed that way, and they went their way, in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree 
dried up from the root. Verse 21. And Peter remembering, remember they had, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cast has withered away. Verse number 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says shall, will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever the things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. The last verse. And, whoever, and wherever you, should, you, you, you stand praying, if you are anything against, against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. So as we have said, mountains in our lives will be, the, the, their aim is to make sure I'm not peaceful. I have no peace whatsoever. It is to disrupt me from my progression. It is to hinder me from my destiny. It is to scare me from reaching my goals, which God has given me. So those mountains, whatever they are, the Bible is trying to tell me and to encourage me that I have the grace and I have the power. If I use the proper language, I can handle them whatever time I find myself. So the Bible records in Mark chapter number 11. Jesus is passing by a fig tree that had leaves but no figs. It did not, did not bear any fruit. To the astonishment of his followers, Jesus cast it and said, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And Jesus went his, with his disciples to the temple in Jerusalem. The verses between verse number 14 and 20 is because Jesus went to the temple. And you know, the, the, the story in the temple was he met people that had turned the Gentile area, the prayer of prayer for all nations because it was open for the Gentiles. They had turned it into business. It was no longer a place of prayer. They were there for business. And what Jesus did was to whip them and tell them to get out because they had turned the house of God, the house of prayer, into become a den of, of thieves. And you know, interjecting there a little bit, what was happening was they had commercialized what was not supposed to be commercialized. They had made a lot of business in making sure the doves that poor people would come and buy there for sacrifice had increased. So it was a business area. It was like, if you need it, you have to bribe to get it. If you need it, you have to pay more than you need it. And you know, when I read that, I saw Kenya myself. I, I saw, wow. May Jesus come and do some weeping around. Because it has become so commercialized, I'm actually afraid. Very, very soon, Mike, you might have a ticket to go back to Seattle, but for you to get a seat, you have to give someone something so that you can get us. And yet you have a ticket. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, we used to laugh ourselves out when we, they, they would tell us, if you go to Nigeria, you have flown in, your time of departure is not certain. Because there will be no seat. It will be full. Always full. So what you do, then you have to talk nicely for a seat to be found. And when I thought about this verse, where greed has gotten hold of, it's all over the place. It's all over the place. It, I, I actually remembered and, uh, sometimes when you tip people, you need to be careful. <coughs> because when you start tipping them, No, seriously. When I was in the Matatu business, there's a place that we used to pass by with Alice after business to go home. And I would, we would buy chips and chicken. Before I discovered my chicken was always big. Not the, issue, the usual. 
I had eaten a lot of chicken there, but I used to tip. I had, kwa hivyo na niibia ya muindi. Yangu inakuwa ni chicken kubwa. Si chicken kuota ni chicken kubwa. Unajua ikiwa kubwa lazima iwe nusu. Ama mnaonaje? Si huyu dada apigwe makofi na aishi milele. Unajua shida ya, 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 ya kusimama unywe ni kale kathoti ulikuwa nako nako kana <laughs> unapoanza kufikiria utamu wa <clears throat> so in our country where everyone actually i'm not i'm, I'm amazed actually amazed completely in matu they arrested an inspector and a copro and some of their scaries camera inawashika vizuri and they were not even the vehicle stopped were not checked but it was like a toll station unakuja unapeana unakuja unapeana une kama kodi unapeana and you might think it is matu only it happens all over the place may jesus come and help us May Jesus come and help us. So he wiped them. And he was saying, no, no, this has to be a place of prayer for all nations, for all people. This has to be a place of prayer for all people. The Bible says, because they heard. Because, because they heard. You see, let me go back again and, and, and say this. When Jesus passing by a fig tree and had no leaves in it and it did not bear any fruit to the astonishment of his followers Jesus cast it and said may no one ever eat fruit from you again then Jesus went to his to the temple with his disciples in Jerusalem where he he overturned the tables of the money changers why because the price had increased they had imposed bigger prices for the pigeons and animals intended for sacrifice meaning Poor people could not sacrifice. Poor people had nothing. But Jesus got convicted into his spirit and said, you cannot turn the marketplace, the, the house of God into a marketplace and a den of thieves that all they are looking for is how they can collect some money from the poor people that had gone to sacrifice. So that's what he did. But as the following morning, the disciples following him observed the tree had completely dried out and was dead, even down to its root. So Peter remembered what had happened the day before and said to Jesus, Teacher, look, there is no life in the fig tree you cast. And Jesus answered, Have faith in God. The truth is, you can say to this mountain, Fall into the sea, and if you have no doubts and believe what you say will transpire. God will make it so. Therefore, I urge you to believe that you have received the things you have asked for in prayer. And God will grant them to you as you pray. But if you are angry with someone, forgive him so that your heavenly father will also forgive you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 and 9, if you can put it for, for me, Tafadali. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 8 and 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 and 9. Concerning these things, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Verse number 9. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my, infirmity, my infirmity, infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In the book of Matthew 26 and verse 39. Matthew 26 verse 39. Matthew 26 verse 39. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying, Oh my father, if it is possible let this car pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. So occasionally, it's mountain are placed in our lives as a means of molding our character. Sometimes, 
Mountains will move despite our faith because God does not desire them to do so. Some mountains will not move because God does not want them to move either. But the Bible states that Paul had pleaded to the Lord three times to remove a thorn from his flesh. In spite of this, it didn't go. Then Jesus is pleading to the Father so that the cup can be taken out of him. He pleaded, but it didn't. In other words, Paul, what you need is not a solution. What you need is grace. Jesus, what you need is not the cup to be removed. It is the grace to go through it. And it is out of that that I want to bring about four principles that I think are key for us in this year of threshing the mountain. Number one is speak to your mountain. Speak to it. You know, the story that we, we were taught by our bishop one time of this lady that uh, uh, came to our church also. She's the one who helped us construct. She's an interna international const const contractor now. This lady was just a member in church. And she used to have curios, a shop to sell curios. This Michongo Michongo. And it had stayed for a whole a time without anybody buying them. Nistok to Nistok to Nistok to Nistok to. So that day, the, uh, the, the, uh, the bishop was speaking about everything. Everything has ears. So speak to it. Speak to it. So the, the, the bishop said, if you have a business, go tell your business. It, you brought it there for business. Not to kaha posio nini sio maua. So go tell your curious. Go tell your business. Go tell them that you bought them to be bought. So after service, she went to her curio shop and locked herself inside. And she held her curios and telling the curios, When she opened on Monday, a tourist came directly to her. All the stock that she was praying for to be bought is what the tourists wanted, not the new ones. The tourists wanted the old ones. So all the old ones were bought. She goes to the, to, the, to, 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 to the church and tells the bishop, they had. And from that point on, her life changed. Because if you can speak to a situation and you have faith in God, it is going to happen. So I want to, to, to encourage you. It doesn't matter what mountain it is. Kuna kamulima kana a US visa. Kana sumbuwa Don't give up. Keep on talking to it. Na usiwe mtu manoki. Unajua mtu manoki anakasirika kana sema. Kwa ni maamerika ni binguni. Sio binguni lakini ulitaka kwenda. Kweli. So ni mulima. Pambana nayo. Utangazie. Actually you should pass near the embassy and say wewe. Wewe. Lakini uchunge usionekane kwa sabu kamera za pale. Nikali sana. So speak to our mountain. Speak to our mountain. There is concentration of power in the spoken word. The Bible states that our words have the power to either bless or curse. They can either build or destroy. Their impact can either be life-saving or life-ending. Ultimately, we will all be held accountable for every idle word we speak. We should therefore choose our words carefully. So if there is a mountain, address it. Address it. Hallelujah. So when I read Mark chapter 11, verse 23. You can look at it again. Mark 11, verse 23. We are talking about speaking to our mountain, whatever mountain it is. For assuredly, I say to you, whatever you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that these things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. What Jesus is trying to do here is to elevate the power of the spoken word in this verse. That it is in a new level. It is evident that spoken words compiled, coupled with faith can assist us in overcoming some of the challenges we face in our daily life. And I'm talking to people here that are going to say, yes, I believe, and start speaking to those mountains that are before them. It is elevating, elevating the word, the word that we use. So when we consider this, that Jesus said this word, sometimes we just need to quiet 
or other voices in order to hear the voice of Christ speaking to our souls. Because a mountain is symbolic of great difficulties. Somebody said this. The term moving mountains was common in the Jewish expression for overcoming difficulties. So every time they would get into those challenge, they would talk about overcoming or moving mountains. Based on this interpretation then, Jesus is stating that our greatest difficulties can be overcome by expressing our faith through words. So Jesus instructs us to speak to our mountains. As the difficulties we face make us feel hopeless and afraid, we need to identify them and speak into them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I was listening this morning as I, I was also thinking about today. And I, as I thought, uh, somebody was saying, if, if, if it is true that my help has come, then I need to start telling myself because the person who doubts I have help is myself. So I'll start verbalizing it. That help, my help has come. That God wants to help me. So it is important for us as Christians to speak the truth of God's word as we often echo the lies of the devil many times. Because Satan is a liar, the father of lies. Some children of God also believe that what the devil says is true. And we need to turn around and believe what Jesus says is true. Because if he says there is a door that is he has opened for you, that's what it means. I might not see it, but if he has said it, it will come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. So as long as we are breathing, he is not finished with us yet. In spite of what the devil says about me, God says, I have a plan for you. It doesn't matter what others say. God says, he has a plan for me. Don't put a period where the Lord has put just a comma. Watch a kweka comma that you make a full stop. Where in nani? Kama mungu ameweka comma. Oh my goodness. You know, sometimes you feel like you want to preach. There are some of you, all what God has done is a comma. And tell the people around you, it is not yet a full stop. It is just a comma. Something good is going to happen. Something good is going to happen. Because God is not finished with me yet. Hallelujah. Me, I love the Lord. Satan, you are a liar. You are a thief. You are an accuser. You are a murderer. And the devil is on a mission to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come so that you might have life and have the abundance of it. In other words, my friend, watch me. It's just a comma. Just watch me. It's just a comma. God is not through with me yet. Say hi to your neighbor. Greet them. Tell them you are greeting him. Who God is not through with yet. Don't put me off. I might have lost a job. But don't put me off. Maybe I'm having some domestic challenges. Don't you. Don't put me off. Maybe my business is not doing very well. But please don't. The Lord has not finished with me yet. Am I talking to someone? Consider Job's experience. The devil intended to convince Job to cast God. Because mountains may also attempt to turn us away from the Lord by dri driving a wedge between us and God. Where you say this mountain is so big, but there is no mountain that God cannot cause you to go over it. You know, somebody, somebody said this, and, 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 please. wakati wangu Daisha. I said, tu. Kwanza tu, kwanza tu. Somebody said this, you know, when you see a mountain, there are many ways to handle it, right? Unaweza amua wewe mlima, nitakupanda. Kwa hivyo upande mlima, uende pande ile nyingine. Itakugarimu, sio? Unaweza sema wewe mlima nitakubomoa, nita nita ejailima, taeja mutaro. Itakugarimu, itachukua muda. Na ni njia tu, it's still a solution, isn't it? Lakini unaweza weka dana maiti ndani. Ukae kando tu. Ufinye. Kimulimachote kikuje chini. The point is, there is no way. There is no way. Tell your neighbor there is no way. That mountain of yours cannot go down. But the point is, speak to it. Speak to it. 
Speak to it. In Mark chapter 11 verse 22. This is the other principle that you need. Whatever mountain it is. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Um, you see, some mountains can be stubborn. I have said this somewhere. One time we were chasing the devil those years. It was 1973. We were chasing the devil. mkutano We were praying. He, na alitusumbua. Kutoka saa ine, baka saa kumi na moja na nusu. Akitoka hapa, anaingia mtu mwingine. Tunaenda kukemea pande hii, anaingia mwingine hapa. Tunakemea pande hii, anaingia pande hii. Tuka stokwa na jasho. Ati, ata, ata tu kuomba maombi hile, tuka tumepanga kuomba. Tu, we were harassed by the devil. But just before dawn, somebody said, Tunafanya kazi bure hapa. Mungu alituleta hapa tujitakase. Kwanza tujitakase. So we took time to to cleanse ourselves and confess all sins known and unknown. And then we told the devil now pali uliingilia tokea hapo hapo and akatoka. But it was sasa ni asubuhi maombi yetu ilikuwa imefika mahali pale. So the Bible says have faith in God. It should be noted However, that the lexicon of the original language does not state have faith in God, but rather it says, have the faith of God. I hope you're understanding this. The, the translation which says uh, that, that we should have faith in God, the original translation is, have the faith of God. Am I talking to someone? You have been having faith in God. Now I want you to have the faith of God. He spoke into things that were. It is his word that brought life. Speak the word. Have the faith of God. I say, Salimia jirani yako mwambiwe jameni buwana. We pata imani ya ke mungu. Hey. Unatisha tishwa na kwani niwe wa kwanza. You know, when, actually, when you know you are not the first or the last. You are not the first or the last. Unapiga teke, unambia shetani. You thought I, nitaka hapa, sikai. Speak it. Have the faith of God. So heartfelt sentiments and verbal expression can be in conflict with us. But the words that we are saying, believe in our hearts should not contradict what we say. If the Lord says it, I believe it and I will do it. To put it in another way, faith, faith comes first, then the words follow. We can be assured that the mountain will move if Jesus says we can command it to do so. Because nothing is impossible with him. So faith must be exercised. 2024, faith must be exercised. I pray that you can exercise the faith of God. Remember we are saying, speak it. Even faith, confess it. Wacha kuwa na imani ambayo ni imani, si abandia, lakini ni imani ambayo hata wewe mwenye huyamini. Sai. Because kama uamini atawezi ongea habari yake. Lakini kama unaiamini unaongea habari yake. Eh? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. All right, let's move to number 3 of the principle. It is still in those verses that we read from the book of Mark, verse 24. The thing is expect to receive it. If I have spoken and if I have the faith of God, then I should prepare myself to receive it. I'm not talking about how much you have. I'm talking about faith in God and speaking into your situation. There are some of you looking at me and you know where God has placed you today. It's because you started by speaking. You just confessed. Kuna muimbaji moja hata kama Theologia yake sa igine ina ni chengaga kidogo. Kuna maneno walisema ni kaona hiyo ni maneno ya imani. Akasema. Ati ala, alikuwa anatazama, anakitazama watu anaona wana kula chakula kizuri. Na ya naomba buwana, ningependa kula kama hizo. Mtu kama anaendesha kagari kazuri, anakatazama anaona. 
hata mimi ningependa kuendesha kagari kazuri sasa hiyo ni kawimbo yake kawimbo kaka kana nisaidia hivi kwamba nikaona unararua kuku vizuri si lazima nikunyang'anya yako hapana lakini nitatoka nikikiri kanyama kaguku karu retu oguo gakogererwa mutu kena mulio na nengurea you see the, the thing the thing is you know christianity let me say this christianity sometimes we look like we are hatusikii vizuri kweli kabisa ni kama hatusikiagi vizuri when my father died is when i could and started confessing that i'm going to europe i'm going to fly out i did not know where i'm going, was going but i said i will in my voice it says your father is dead your provider is no longer there but i the more i had that voice the more i declared i will si pesa ni muujiza si wengine amujue nilienda ulaya nikiwa technician engineer wa mitambo yeah some of you god can turn you around and put favor on to you so all what you need is to speak have faith now be ready to receive it so unajua shida moja ya watu wa Mungu hapa mnaona hapa ni watu wangapi wangependa kuwa na gari nzuri weka mkono yako chini how watu wameinua wangependa gari nzuri hata lessons hawana wengine wao no wewe nimeona uko nayo hata gari uko nayo lakini kuna wengine hata lessons tu lakini tukiyapenda gari nzuri I say. Si ni kutafuta lessons kwanza niweke kwa mfuko. Ni watu wangapi wangependa kwenda majuu? I say. Unaona tungependa kwenda majuu. Wengi wetu hapa hata hatuna passport. Hata hatujuzi natolea kwa wapi. The point is look for passport put it somewhere. Wait because you are expecting God to move. Remember you have spoken to that mountain You believe that it is going to go now you are ready for the action. Sasa unajua kuna mjiji nyingine ikitendeka. Una gari hata kwa kupake kwako hauna kwa hivyo unapake kwa jirani. I say. Hebu nikuache tu. Because I did that nilipaka kwa jirani miaka kadhaa. But God is good. So it is unfortunate that many Christians today offer prayers but they do not reflect Jesus instruction regarding prayer and the prayer that Jesus is instructing us is once i pray once i say it because of the elevation of the word of god then i will believe that it is going to happen lastly you know beatrice leo nilianguka nilisema four ningesema singetaja kitu sasa kwa sababu nilisema four watu wanagoja hata ya mwisho lazima niseme leo nimeanguka i thought i had a lot of time you know the trick is don't tell them the points you just give two and you finish but now i said four the last one greet your neighbor mwambie jirani hii ni yako forgive those that have wronged you it's a principle if you want the mountain to fall Some mountains will never fall because you are carrying grudge you are carrying some pride you want to prove a point to someone is like you are competing with someone and it will not happen that principle when, when i thought about it i wondered why is it put there i thought we would have another point there but this principle is important and it is jesus who says to us we are speaking to a mountain we are having faith in god we are believing the answer is coming but he ends up by saying we need to forgive those that we have grudge over yes grudge over and he taught us even in the lord's prayer that it is important for us to know yes god will forgive us but he says I, I, he will do it as i also forgive others let me Let me say to you there are some of you actually today if you believe what i'm saying there are things that you live here today and you will go for your miracle 
Because there are some people that you have carried. So every time you are praying, and they, the devil is good. Oh, shetani ni mwerevu. Analeta wazo lile. Alafu unanza kukamea shetani. Tukua tukiomba mamu mazuri. Tunanza kusikia tukua pamoja shetani shindu, shetani shindu. Sasa tunashindu tena meshindiwa wapi na tukua tukiomba tu. Eh? Sasa tulikuwa tunaenda safari. Na sasa shetani ya shindu, shetani ya shindu. Kumbe ni maali karibu upoke mujiza wako. Unaletewa picha ya mtu ambaye kweli kabisa. You need to deal with them. Your mountain is going to fall. But your mountain will not fall whether you have faith, whether you believe, whether you are waiting until you deal with those people that you think ndio wamekushikilia. Wengine, oh may God have mercy. Wengine watu ambao tumetushikiliwa walikufa kitambo. And you are still holding, oh my shosho said, oh my guka said, my teacher said, my this one said and that one said. Inakuzuia. No. Today, today, when it is called today, and when help, and God has said he wants to help me, I will deal with it. I will have an encounter here. Look for someone. I can tell them what they represent so that I can deal with it once and for all. And my life will get permanent change. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You want your mountain to go? Speak to it. You want your mountain to go? Have faith in God. You want your mountain to go? Be ready to receive your miracle. But finally... Forgive those that have grudges against you. And your mountain is going to crumble. Some of the mountain we have, actually, ni kadogo sana. Ni naona ni kadogo sana. Kwa zao ni kakitu kadogo tu. Kumuamini tu mungu. Kidogo tu. Hiyo nao inakuja inanguka chini. May the good Lord help us as he helps me over this. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to finish by Psalms 19 verse 14. I want to finish. Because I said when you have hatred and grudges, it harms yourself the most, actually. Resentment is like swallowing poison and expecting the other person to die. Yani, unaomba, unafika pada, unasema, hakufwe, hakufwe. Hakufi. So grudges lead to only an outcome that is not right. You don't deal with your mountain well. Psalms 19 verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in the sight of God, my strength and my redeemer. So if I'm praying, I need to get to that point and I say, finally Lord, this mountain has to go because I will speak, because I'll have faith, because I'm anticipating and because I've forgiven but let the words of my mouth. Neno linano toka kwa kinyo changu. Mungu waweze kulikubali. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, today, there is someone that you are setting free here forever. There is someone here, dear Father, whose mountain is going to fall into pieces. There is someone here, dear Father, that you are preparing. Like you told us in the book of Isaiah. That you are going to give us tea that can chew up a mountain and thrash it into chaff. That is the prayer that I'm praying for your people in the mighty name of Jesus. And Heavenly Father, we will speak into our mountain. We will have faith in God to destroy our mountain. We will anticipate an answer from God because we have spoken. And finally, we will carry no grudge. We are not comparing ourselves. We are not competing with anyone. Dear Father, we want this mountain to go so that we will honor you and give you praise forever. Indeed, we thank you and we give you praise for this is our prayer in Jesus' name. And everybody say...